the the first thing I'm going to throw at you is actually a quote that I heard you say. It's not an exact quote. So I kind of know it now. But, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you basically said that you'll get instructors that say, well, I'm doing client-centered learning. I'm doing coaching because I asked my student what they wanted to do, and they said, you tell me because you're the instructor. Yeah. And you were kind of relaying that back, and, and I think your response was, that's not coaching. That's not client settling. That's a cop-out. So can you expand on what you mean by that? I can. So we have the DBSA talking all the time about coaching. And coaching was going to be 2010. This was going to be the new thing, coaching. And they got a group of ADIs together in Nottingham, give them a bit of training, and let them loose. Unsurprisingly, you know, these guys were... Because coaching is really free form and generally performed by people who don't know what the subject is, they're just asking questions to help the person they're dealing with come up, come up with the answer. It was a bit free form. So lesson number two, what do you want to do today? Fast moving roundabouts. Oh, right. Well, let's have a go at that. Let's see what happens. Well, it's no surprise that some dodgy stuff happens. Uh, so it was in the hands of the wrong people. Then across the Hermes project uh, um, and, and then there, final report, and there was a piece of video that was with it. And I'm convinced this was the, the, the turning point for the BBSA. And there's a video in it there where the instructor says, right, listen, hey, we've got to get back to the office. Um, maybe I should drive. No, no, no. I'll tell you what, you drive. But um, hey, come on, crack on, hurry up. Come on, spit spot, spit spot. The pupil then goes to run through a stop line or a stop sign, and the instructor has to hit the brake. That then follows a lovely coaching conversation about what can be learned from that. But the BBSA will have looked at that and gone, Whoa, no, 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 no. You have willfully put somebody into a dodgy situation and everything that we do is about not putting people into dodgy situations. Our job is to manage the risk. So I think at that point, when we're not keen on this coaching malarkey. What we need is something in between, hence the term client centered learning. And that's, that's my theory. I don't know how, how true that is. I don't, I don't know, but I'm convinced. So that's where we've got you have to identify the people's learning goals and needs. But if you just let them do whatever they want, the examiner's going to crush you and go, you shouldn't have done that. But in a pure coaching sense, you would say, well, okay, what's the advantages? What's the disadvantages? What's our options? What's the way forward? Right, let's execute that and see what happens. Because you're not the expert. So the, the trouble comes when we enter a safety critical environment. You cannot let people just do whatever they want. Um, nor can you, on the other end of the scale, just let people, oh, well, I just want to carry on doing this. Yeah, but you're not going to learn anything from it. Yeah, but that's what I want to do. So it's a bit of a cop out. And it's something that we, we need to get ourselves over as an industry. It isn't just about letting the learner do whatever they want to do. We have an externally moderated test. So as a, as a team, we have to decide how are we going to meet all this criteria? What order should we do this criteria in? What level of help will you need from me? How will we determine what level of help? And if you look at the part three form, that's what it's about. The first line says, did the trainer identify the people's learning goals and needs? Now, if, you, if you've done 20 minutes, I had somebody fail just, you know, not that long ago. They did a 20-minute segment on independent driving, which went unbelievably well. They pull over, have a little bit of a chat. So what do you want to do now? Or can we just do more of the same? And, of course, the, the, the candidate said, yeah, all right, then. At the end, they were massively criticized by the exam. They said, what did you do that for? You were done with that. Why didn't you move it on? Or at least set a bigger challenge. He said, but that's what my people wanted to do. So I'm being client-centered. But no, you're not. It's your job then as the driver training professional to say, well, we've done that now. We need to be moving on. So I either I need to give you less help, you need to set more of a challenge, or we've been in that and moving on to something else. So it's, you know, I hear it. And sometimes people are being client-centered, but so I don't want to diss people who say that, but it, that we've got to really think about well, who are we serving here? Are they really being helped? You know, all I just want you to tell me what to do. We have to fight it. Why is that? Why do they want that? Is it a defense mechanism? It's a, it's a barrier because at school, coming up with ideas was, was a negative experience. Their friends laughed at them. People pointed. The teacher berated them. That's what's generally underpinning it. So what do you want to do with it? I don't know. You're the instructor. You tell me. It's a cop out. They don't want to answer the question. Or they don't feel comfortable enough and this is the general way. They don't feel comfortable enough in that person's presence to bear their soul. You know, it's really important that the number one priority for a coach is to create the right environment, to create the rapport, to create the environment where the learner or the person you're trying to help 
doesn't fear judgment from you. And of course, they do fear judgment from us because we use ridiculously judgmental language. That was good, that was bad, that was better, that was worse. What should we work on? What should we try and get better? How are you going to do that better next time? Oh. What we should be talking about, if we really want to be coachy, is what's the outcome we're expecting from this exercise we're about to undertake? And then what's the outcome we got? Let's compare what we got with what we wanted. Is it different? Yeah. How different? How can we turn what we got into what we wanted? That's, there's no judgment there. So this is critical. And because we don't understand it, we want to set fire to it. So, yeah, I'm a good instructor, me. That's, I hear that all the time from people. Nobody said you weren't a good instructor. You're not very good at coaching. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. make a bad instructor if you're not good at coaching. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this short lesson. For more information, check out www.theinstructorpodcast.com.